Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Uh, I am sitting here in my house with Afro behind me, if, you can, if you're watching visually. And today I'm excited to talk about my mission in the world and why I came here and how excited I am to activate all of you in a way that is going to light up your whole world and make a positive impact in your life. Um, so the reason why I love human design, I want to talk about human design for a second. The reason why I love human design is because for me, it has really helped me to align myself with what my soul mission is. Like we all have this higher calling that we can feel intuitively, but we're wondering if it's, you know, if it, we're just making it up, if it's our ego, you know, we're always like questioning whether this is real or if this is something that is like divinely guided, right? And for me, I, I found out about human design probably four years ago now, and I've been studying it pretty actively off and on over the last four years. Um, and what I found is that for me, it landed in what my soul mission was. Like I was already doing my soul mission. I was on path and it helped give me the power to activate it. So I want to read you, on human design, there's something called like um, an incarnation cross, and this is kind of your soul's mission. Like in the video game, that is life. If you accomplish this mission, then you have accomplished what you're meant to do in your lifetime, right? And mine is the cross of alignment, and, um, it says your life theme is to align yourself and everyone around you with the remembrance that caring makes life worthwhile. In a world where people often find themselves separated, ostracized, and in suffering, your presence and nurturing qualities are in great demand. And it goes on to say that like, you know, I can see exactly where like people can make improvements within their lives and within communities in order to bring more alignment. And for me, this is just like naturally wh who I am. Like I've been called like the mother of the community, of my friend groups. And it's because I just love making people feel safe and dropped into their bodies. And e it's like safe to be in their bodies. And also just f it's so natural for me to want to create a reality where we care, like we're in this together, you know? And I feel that as a society, we have really explored to the max, like to the end limit of what it is to be an individual. Like if you look in the world today, everyone is, and also throughout history of, of the last like couple thousand years, like people have really been like, this is mine, this is my land, this is my thing, this is my money, this is, you know, mine, 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 mine. And it's, it's very... Um, individualistic driven like I need to make sure I'm good first before everyone else and there is a balance of that I do believe in that I've actually learned that I need to be more balanced in honoring my needs first before I can help other people so I really I really <laughs> encourage you to honor what you need first and set your boundaries but I feel as a society we have gone the other extreme where we care it's almost like it's almost like people are scared to care about other people or they're worried what it means. Like sometimes I think it's like too much response. They feel like too much responsibility. They get overwhelmed by it. And so they just shut down and don't do anything or they don't even know. It's like they don't have this lived e embodied, like in their bodies, a lived experience of what it is like to care about people. Maybe they weren't raised in an environment where people actually genuinely cared. Maybe they weren't raised in a community where people actually genuinely cared. Society, you know, for me, this is like why I feel that my soul was born into such a strong community because I was able to, from a lived experience, like in my body, grow up in what, it f what I would consider like, you know, what we were in tribally like thousands of years ago when people were like, this is my tribe, we take care of each other, we're all in this together. And it was like, back then, it was like pure survival. Like they did this because one, these are your people and you care about your people. And two, like you need to do it together in order to survive. So because we've become like very able to, I, you know, we don't need each other to survive necessarily anymore. But also I feel like there's just this energy of, I wanna make sure that 
Yeah, it's the idea that the individual comes first before the community or the tribe or the society. And that's an interesting thing to explore. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, for me, it's all about connection. It's all about caring. It's like, yeah, you might sit there in your mansion that you have built for yourself and you're alone. And then what do you do next? You know, like for me, what I've realized in my life is it doesn't actually like it matters less what I'm actually doing and it matters more who I'm doing it with. And what vibration are we sharing? Is it a, is a vibration of love and soul family? And like, I, I'm doing this unconditionally because I love you. And we have a shared vision and a shared mission of where we're going in the world. This like feeling of like, we are in this together. We are not meant to do this alone. We're meant to do this together. And it's more fun together. And I have this vibration in me so that where, so then therefore, wherever I go, I actively am creating this vibration with the people around me. You know, I have built my soul, I call it my soul family, like people that I consciously choose, like my chosen family that I've built over the last 10 years. And I've connected, they're all, I've met them all over the world and I've connected them to each other because they're my family and I want them to be family with each other. And so a lot of them have met up with each other around the world. You know, they've gone on holidays together. Like we're all one big family. Like this is my inner soul family. And then as a global community, all of you who are watching this or listening to this, you're part of my global community, you know, and I care about you. Like I actually genuinely care. And I think about you and I'm like, how can I help them? How can I activate them to live a better life and be, feel more empowered and create their dream reality? Because it's all inside of us. We create our realities. And this is something that I realized is that it really, it really comes, that creating your own reality really comes down to your belief system because our belief system is the baseline of what we do, everything, you know, how we feel, what we what we think and it's and it's really important <laughs> to have connection built into that baseline because for me when i have been working through you know like negative beliefs or just trauma like straight up trauma of things that i've gone through yeah i can sit there and like journal about it i can sit there and like you know meditate and release it as best i can that that is part of the work you know that's part of the inner work that i do and i encourage all of you to do there is something also about going to the beach with my dog and one of my best friends and her dog and just sharing from my heart what's going on and having a good cry and having her hug me and be there for me and support me so for me connection is like that kind of connection that I'm talking about, the kind of caring that I encourage and activate all of you to do is connection out of the energy of abundance. So when you're connecting to someone, is it are you doing it because you actually need something from them? It, it could be that you want connection, that you want love, that you want uh, you know, a job opportunity, whatever it is of what could happen from this connection but if you go into meeting someone new or you know developing your friendship with someone that you know already if you're doing it out of unconditional love that means i love you and i love spending time with you and i'm excited to get to know you more purely because i just love you you know or like i'm meeting this person purely because i'm excited to share my energy with them not because I need something. If you need something, you're already going into a scarcity vibration. And the whole world is in a scarcity vibration when it comes to connection. And the only way to shift this into the positive, into an upward spiral, is for all of us to, one, feel safe in our bodies, to, like, that we're going to honor ourselves when we're connecting to other people. You know, that we understand what our boundaries are, that we understand how to speak them, and then when we go into connection with people, for us to be heart open and be loving and be kind and have that 
come from us first, not wait for the other person to unlock that. Everyone is waiting for the other person to be heart open. Everyone is waiting for the other person to show unconditional love and to show up. But the only way we're going to shift this as a collective is that if each one of us take this as this is my mission, you know, this is, this is, and it's not for the other person. It doesn't actually matter what happens in the connection with the other person. What matters is that you are saying to the universe and to yourself that this is the kind of connection that I choose. So whether it's that person is a vibrational match, whether they're, you know, whether they're going to be heart open back to you, that doesn't matter because the more that you are heart open, the more that you are willing to just show love and kindness and care about people, not for anything else except for the idea that is important to care about humans around us, especially those that we love, especially those that the universe has brought to us that we probably have, you know, some soul connection from past lives, whatever, whatever, like, People come into our lives not randomly. They come into our lives in order for us to learn lessons, in order for us to have connection, and in order for us to play the game of life. You know, like we're here to play this game. I say, I call it a game in the sense that it's all for our benefit. It's all a positive thing. It's like when you come from the vibration that, and you would choose this is not, you don't wait until the external reality to prove this. You choose this, you set this intention within yourself, and then the external reality reflects this. So what you choose is everyone that I meet is here for my benefit, is here for some, in some way, every connection that I make is going to be a positive one. And when you start your day like this and you set this intention, this is what happens. Like, you know, I was on my way, I had to go down to the main city here on the islands and pay some utility bills. And I'm like walking into the electric company and a friend walks out and I was like telling him like, yeah, how are you doing? He's like, oh my God, how are you? You're going to Burning Man, I heard, that's amazing. And we're just like, da -da 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 -da. and then I was like, yeah, you know, I'm here because like my utility bill like never comes on my Thai style stuff. Like the bill always flies away because they just put it on like the, the pole outside of my driveway. And it's very windy here sometimes. And he was like, why don't you just tell them to ask them to give you like one of these little boxes and then they put it, it's like a little mailbox for your utility bill. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Thank you. Like, <laughs> why didn't I think of this? Because I didn't know this like months ago. And for me, this is a perfect, this is a very small example, but it's a perfect example of, I went into that connection with a friend spontaneously and was just so excited to talk to him. And then, you know, it was like, I was still in a positive space, but I was just letting him know why I was there. And then he shared information with me that was really helpful for me. And wow, that's like, this is the perfect example is if you, and I had set my intention when I went down there. I was like, I'm here to just flow and share my positive energy and I'm going to do my errands and everything's going to, you know, work out perfectly. And there was many little things along the way that made that external reality reflect that and this was one of them um so it might sound like a small thing but it's it's a very big thing it will change your whole reality where if you set your intention in the morning like i am divinely guided i'm on my path i choose positive energy that is supportive for me every single person that comes into my life is going to you know reaffirm this positive energy and this might be something where you need to work with it, work with this vibration, this frequency, and this energy, because there could be some negative beliefs below the surface that are like, oh, that's not true, or like, whatever, whatever, what if this happens, like fear or negativity. The more that you speak it out loud, your words will eventually catch up with your subconscious. Your subconscious will eventually catch up with your words. <laughs> you know what I mean. So basically, we are programming ourselves every single time that we say something out loud. So if you ever see me, <laughs> I spend a lot of time re recently like on my own. One, because I'm, I'm shifting a huge amount vibrationally right now, and I found that for myself, it's actually best to um, spend a lot of time alone and like meditate and be in the water and you know, do what I need to do for myself because I'm getting so much upgrades right now. And what I've realized is that when I, <laughs> what I was going to say is if you see me, you will see that I am constantly talking to myself because for me, it is 
a huge moment in my life where I am choosing myself as my primary partner. Like I'm dating myself. People say this a lot, but I, it's one of the first times where I'm really asking, what does Brittany need right now? How can I support her? And I'm also looking at a lot of my belief systems. So I'm kind of pulling back from other connections in order to really like, kind of like, you know, I'm watching a movie and eating popcorn, like watch what thoughts come through my head and like really pay attention to them. So if there is a fear or a negative thought that comes into my head, I treat it kindly, I send it love, and then I speak an affirmation out loud. <laughs> so you might think, you might look at me and think, well, <laughs> what is she doing over there? But I am literally reprogramming myself at the moment in a very conscious way. I think honestly, for me, I'm always doing this, but lately it's been a full a full retreat with myself and it's so beautiful because it's working and I can feel my vibration is rising and I can feel and I can like the external reality is like reflecting the synchronicity there's so much material abundance coming into my life right now there's so many opportunities like going to the states there's so many things coming through organizing a play party this weekend like and it's almost full like there's just to the point where I'm um having to really uh, manage my time because there's so many messages coming through and they're all beautiful and positive and I'm so excited to respond and also I'm excited to make a podcast and then I'm excited to go to the beach with my dog and there's so many things I'm excited about and they're all so beautiful. But what I realize is that when I spend less energy um, catering to and hosting negative thoughts that are coming through, I actually have more life force energy to do all the things. So let me give you an example. In the past, when I would be doing a play, hosting a play party that week and a couple other things would happen, I would, I would be in my head overwhelmed by the amount of worries that I had so like on the surface when people see me and they like you see me now like you think like oh wow she's got her life together she's living her best life and I am and also I was spending a lot of time below the surface worrying about things and it wasn't even sometimes conscious like it I would just feel tired I would feel like I would just hit this point sometimes throughout the day where I would get super overwhelmed and I would need to just like stop doing everything and now that I've slowed down and I've really released a lot of these negative beliefs and verbally said affirmations, I have so much more energy. Like on the 3D reality, I am doing so much more because one, I'm flowing through everything. So I'm really following my intuition. Like, yeah, I have a list of things I would like to do in a day, but I don't force myself that it needs to go in this order. At every single moment, I'm feeling into what my body is saying. I'm feeling into what my flow is. I'm feeling into the synchronicity around me. Like if I run into a friend and we have a great conversation, it leads to this thing. It's like, well, I'm, I know that I am divinely guided and I'm on my path. And I'm just kind of like this vessel for like the universe to flow energy through. And all I have to do is receive it and enjoy it as much as possible. <sighs> and when you really are in that knowingness, not just like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Like, I've heard this before. I've, like, I've listened to a lot of spiritual talks. I've done a lot of my own work. Right now, I'm in the actual knowingness of it, and I'm, like, living my life from this vibration. And I will tell you, it is so amazing. It's, like, so, like, juicy and so exciting and I just feel like a little kid all the time like I'm just like oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh and the the biggest improvement in my life right now is I feel so much more like trusting that everything's working out and also I feel just like like everything's going to be okay. Everything already is okay. Everything's so amazing. Oh my God, I'm so excited to be alive. I'm so grateful to have this experience. And that's what I feel like I was tapping into that energy on my last podcast was like, how beautiful is it that we get to have this human experience? Like how beautiful is it that we get to like be in these bodies and like I'm looking outside of my backyard and it's just like palm trees and lush forests, like 
tropical forest and my my dog is right behind me and I love her so much just like unconditionally and I live on this tropical island where I get to go naked in the water at sunset every day and like all of my best friends live here and I'm working on beautiful offerings uh, where I'm pouring my heart into so I can share them with you and like help you gr grow your dream life like I'm trying to put into words the vibration of like immense gratitude that I have in my life and on a level that I have never experienced before. Like this is like, we're on a new level right now in the Britney timeline <laughs> and it's great um, and I'm super excited for it. So, uh, and I'm sharing this with you because if you're like getting ready on your day right now or you're like eating lunch or you're going walking in nature and you're just like, am I on path? Like, am I doing what I meant to do in the world? Like, or should I like, like, am I good enough to feel loved and connection? And I'm here to tell you, you are completely on path. You are divinely guided. Like everything that is meant to happen for you is going to happen. All you need to do is trust. Trust that the universe has your back, God, source, whatever you want to call it. Trust that you can unfold into the knowingness that everything is working out for you. It's when you're in that knowingness, in that vibration, in that very deep core belief that everything is okay and everything is happening for you, that is the seed that sprouts into everything that you want to create in your life. So it's not about, <laughs> it's less about I need to go do all these hard things and it's more about <sighs> taking a deep breath and creating this belief or coming home, really coming home to the belief that you are okay and that you're good enough and you are loved and that you are worthy of connection and abundance and all the beautiful things that your heart desires purely for being you. Like this is your divine right. And a way that you can start tuning into this vibration is to start saying these affirmations out loud to yourself that, you know, I am following my divinely guided path. And when I follow my divinely guided path, I am protected, I am provided for, and nothing can get in the way. So like, and then when you do this, it's very, the second part is very important, is that you start following your intuition. So instead of asking, like, am I doing good enough or asking for some external permission slip that you are a good person, that you are on path, it is all inside of you. Everything that you know that you are meant to do is already inside of you. It's more about following these intuitive, you know, whis I call it the whispers of your heart. So like if your heart is whispering like, hey, go to this coffee shop and you're like, I don't ever go to this coffee shop and I want to go this way because my logical mind is like, you know, it's faster if I go this way. But your heart is whispering for you to go to this one coffee shop this morning and maybe there's a person there that you're meant to meet. Maybe this person can give you one of your heart desires. So it's like, that's what I'm saying. It's like a video game. You need to follow the breadcrumbs, like this little trail that your soul is giving you. If you're letting your physical mind get in the way through logical reasoning, through you know, negative beliefs, through doubts, through fear, you're just like giving up on playing the game. You're not even, you're just like, that's why so many people are frustrated in their life because they're literally not even living their life that their soul has meant for them. Like how sad is that? And I spent a good chunk of my early life feeling this frustration, feeling this like deep, like pessimism, this like, you know, just like negative vibration about life. But it's because I wasn't living my life. I wasn't following my divinely guided path. And, you know, part of your soul's experience could also be to not follow your path for a while just to know what it's like. You know, it's cause sometimes you have to like, try a bunch of things in order to decide, okay, this, no, this is my thing. This is what I meant to do. But this is also why I love spiritual tools that we've been given, like human design and many other ones, like whatever you are intuitively guided towards, 
follow that. And then you will find if you just if you're like, I don't know what my path is. I don't know what my mission is. I know that I meant to do something big in the world. And I just want to feel like I'm doing it and that I'm good enough. Then just ask your soul and say, like, can you please tell me what I know? Like, can you please tell me what I'm meant to do? And it will tell you, but it, it's going to tell you through intuitive leads. It's going to tell you through these whispers of your soul. It's going to lead you into the direction of where you're going to get the answers. So the most important thing is that one, you decide and you choose the vibration of I am safe, I'm divinely guided, I am protected. And then you allow yourself to play this game of life, knowing that it is always going to be for your benefit, knowing that you are divinely guided and led and that everything is happening for you. So I want to tell you <laughs> an example of like, this is the perfect example is me going to Burning Man, right? So <laughs> I had many intuitive like little leads like poking me like, hey, Burning Man, Burning Man, like many of my friends are going to Burning Man this year that I love very much. And I had multiple invitations earlier in the year to go to Burning Man with in different situations. And I kept telling all of them, no, I need to stay in Thailand this year because logically I want to build out my impact, you know, on the ground in Thailand, like kind of just stay grounded and like make courses, make retreats, like make all of these ways that I can help all of you. And the universe kept saying, like, but are you sure you don't want to go to Burning Man? Are you sure you don't want to go to Burning Man? Are you sure you don't? And I was like, and then I had this point here on the island where I had just done all of high season, like the high season's like December through April. And there's so many people coming through that I'm hosting and hosting play parties, retreats, like so many events that I'm hosting and coaching, human design readings. So I'm like, there's a lot of Brittany holding space and being the mama of the community. And my inner child was like, I fucking want to play. I want to play. I want to go on an adventure. I want to go receive, you know, like it's my turn. <laughs> and um, so first I went to Japan because I thought, okay, that will be fun. But then I came home and broke up with my boyfriend. Uh, so that wasn't fun. And, but in the end, I think it was exactly what needed to happen. And now I'm in this like very plugged, I'm like straight plugged into the universe. Like I'm getting so many downloads recently that I have to ground myself. I have to do a lot of grounding and I'm considered normally a very grounded person by all my friends. <laughs> so this is the amount of downloads you're like, I'm really like getting all of them. And what they're all saying is you need to go home and heal some of your family stuff with your birth family. And we're gonna give you Burning Man as this really fun way for you to start this adventure. And I said, okay. And I'm like, I'm actively talking to like the universe source God. I'm like, okay, if I do go to Burning Man, if I do go to the States and do this, which is going to be a big thing for me emotionally. If you've listened to any of my podcasts, you understand that this is a very big deal for me to go uh, spend time with my birth family. I haven't seen them in 10 years. And I said to the universe, okay, if I'm going to Burning Man, I want these things. Like I require these things, please, which is like a, a quiet place to sleep that is like not a tent and, you know, an amazing crew of friends to go with and an amazing camp that we're going to stay at. And also really cool Burning Man outfits because I am a fashionista. I love fashion so much. I used to do a lot of modeling. Like I am super into fashion. And then, and then, so I'm telling you, like, I've been getting all of these invitations from different friends. Like one was like, here, you can come stay free camping with me, which means like you bring all your own stuff and like we, we can camp together. And I was like, I don't want to stay in a tent. No, thank you. And uh, like next. And then like another friend has a camp, um, which has a little bit of this and that, but it was like, they do parties all night long. And I was like, no, I need to sleep during the night. Like I'm very much an early morning person, not a night person. And then a girlfriend here on the island messaged me and said, hey, I have a camper van already. I have Burning Man outfits and I would love to go with you and another girlfriend. So like a girl power woman group. Let's go together. And she's already been to like four burns. So this will be her fifth one. And so she knows how she knows what to do with everything. And she already has a camp for us, which I found out is like Copenhagen people who are starting this camp that we're going to stay at. And like we're going to stay in a quiet part of the of the Burning Man area so that I can actually get really nice sleep. So it was like 
I was like, okay, yes. The answer is yes. The answer is I'm going. And for me, this is, this is me actively playing the game of life because the game of life does not need to be serious. Yeah, yeah, of course, sometimes it's going to appear serious, but you can go heal your family trauma and also go to a festival at the same time. You know, like, it doesn't need to be like we're doing this serious thing and this is the only thing we're going to do and, like, that's it. No. It is one big adventure. You get to choose your adventure. You get to have active conversations with the universe, God, source, and really, you know, from this vibration of gratitude and playfulness and joy and love you can ask for everything because the energy of which you ask it in this is really important the energy that you ask the universe for in so if you're already in a scarcity mindset and you're asking the universe for more things the universe is only going to be able to match the vibration that you're currently in so it's only going to give you more scarcity so for instance if you're in a scarcity mindset and you need money the best thing to do is to do gratitude journaling about what you already have. So like, I'm so grateful for the home that I live in. I'm so grateful for the money that I have in my bank account. I'm so grateful for the clothes that I have. I'm so grateful for my car. I'm so grateful. Wow, the universe has given me so much, so much material abundance. I'm so grateful for all of these things. And in that energy, once you've done the gratitude list, in that energy is when you start journaling. And I would love to have this. And I'm so, and I know that I'm divinely guided and whatever is meant for me is coming my way and that I'm always protected and taken care of. Does that make sense? Like you need to get into the vibration that the energy can be a positive one when it comes. And one more tip that I've shared in recent courses is like, when you are asking for things, ask, the last thing you want to say is, I would love to have this in a way that I love because you can violently manifest things. I can't tell you how many times in my life where I've been like, you know, like, ah, oh, I would really love this thing. Like, I want this thing right now. And I'm like in this energy of like, ah, and then that thing comes, but it's not in a way that I love, you know, like it's like, ah. um, so <laughs> it's really important for you to honor your vibration. I mean, the thing that I've realized recently is that it's like all of this game of life, like the best way to play this game of life is to stay in your center. So to not feel any negative, not allow yourself to go into the doubt that something bad's going to happen. Because when you keep in the center and you're, <laughs> I don't know why I'm leaning this way. If you're watching visually, I'm like leaning one direction that doesn't make sense basically like if you're in the center and you stay aligned within yourself it all <laughs> so that just like really made me laugh <laughs> i don't know what this means that i'm leaning all anyways i'm just over here cracking myself up um when you are staying in the center and you're really aligned what that means is like say your physical mind is like i want this thing like you know, you go to the store and you want the specific food or something and you go there and it's not there, like it's out of stock. And you're like, are you going to react in a negative way? Because if you do react in a negative way, that is you telling the universe that you're in scarcity and you don't trust the universe. A response, that, a positive response that you could have is like you go there and it doesn't have the food that you want. You could be like, okay, something more divinely aligned is for me right now. Like, and ask yourself, where am I meant to, like, what food am I meant to eat down? If this is not available, then it's not meant for me today. And what food, what food am I meant to eat? What positive experience am I meant to have right now? And just like keep in this expectation that everything that is positive is coming your way. And I feel, what I find really interesting is I feel like, as a spiritual community, you know, like a lot of people in the world are like waking up spiritually and they're more conscious, like as a spiritual community, we talk about a lot of these things, like, but they're more esoteric, right? Like they're like, like, you know, you hear a podcast, but then you go, do <laughs> you go live your life and it's like completely the opposite. Or you like, you go to a retreat and like, you're able to hold the vibration there in that retreat of like love and light and then you go out in the world and it's it's hard to stay heart open in this world i i'm not saying it's easy i'm saying if you want to play the game of life this is the best way to play it um 
but that means that you have to create your own reflections for yourself and hang out with people that are also able to reflect this like trust of the universe back to you. I have very small, I probably can count them on one hand, the amount of people that I feel I can bounce this trust of the universe back and forth. Um, and the reason why I say that is that, you know, like we talk about like, there's this, this kind of like intellectual knowingness of like, yeah, everything's for us. Everything's happening. Everything's perfect. In the end, it's all love and light. Like love is the answer, blah, blah, blah. So this is like an intellectual thing. And the reason why I say it's intellectual, because the actual lived experience of how people act, like when they are dropped in their bodies and they're not conscious of it, is when you, I'll give you an example. Go have a conversation with one of your friends and ask yourself, are they trusting the universe? Because I will go and have conversations with some of my friends here on the islands, and there's some people that I consider like pretty spiritually awake, you know? But then when we're in conversation, all they're doing is complaining. All they're doing is is like like talking about the like there's a certain ethnic group that has come to the island in great abundance, and they're just like these fucking people, like you know, duh, and I'm just like. <laughs> what? I thought you were, <laughs> I thought you were like spiritually aware. I thought you were like understanding that we're all one and we're all connected. Um, or they're, or they're saying stuff like, you know, it's not meant, it's not going to work out or, and oh, this person, like they really, they, they're actually trying to hurt you. And like, you know, you should be really scared. And, and I'm just sitting there like, this is not the reality that I choose. Like I choose to the why I'm bringing this up is that you can believe all of these things in your head, but what you say out loud is what programs your subconscious brain, which is what actually creates your reality. So you can write out all the affirmations you want. You can listen to all the affirmations in the world you want. But when you're in daily conversation with the people that you love, with your coworkers, with strangers, whoever, what words are you saying out of your mouth? Are you actively in trust of the universe that everything is working out for you and that everything is positive in the end and that it's all one big game and that you're just going to show up heart open and eager to like have as much fun as possible? Is this the vibration that you're in? I know that it's scary to be in that vibration. You want to know why it's scary? It's because... There isn't that many reflections out there of people doing it. It's a very brave thing right now in this point in the timeline, like of our global timeline, to actually be an active trust of the universe that everything is working out. And that's why I'm telling you this, because you have the choice to create your reality and it starts right there. It starts with what you're saying out of your mouth. It starts with the thoughts that you have playing, the, the tapes that are playing on loop in your head when you're not conscious of them. That is what creates your, your, your external reality. It's not what happened, you know, what your ex-partner did. It's not like what this guy over here did and your boss or whatever. It's like, no, what belief systems do you believe and what frequency are you allowing into your life? So for me, when I'm in a big frequency upgrade, I actually pull in to myself more and I start being very careful with whose energy am I allowing into my frequency bubble, my aura, whatever you want to call it. Like, who am I allowing myself to connect to? Because that frequency is going to affect me because there's only so much that you can combat. You know, like if you're like everything, like <laughs> I'll, I'll give you an example. Like I went to a birthday dinner the other day when I got here back to the island and I was really in this frequency that I'm talking to you about, like full trust of the universe. And I had just had a situation play out where I was like manifesting peace and manifesting like the, for the situation to go a certain way and just fully trusting the universe that it was all working out perfectly. And it did, you know, so I came home into a situation where I had just proven to myself that it is again, once again, totally possible and, and this is how you play the game of life in a positive way to just trust and, you know, of course, speak up for what you need, speak your boundaries and also 
really send positive energy out there to everyone involved. Even if someone is being negative towards you, your positive energy will, it will just overcome that. It will just like neutralize that. Positive energy always wins. So I went to this party, one of my good friends, it was his birthday. And I love all the people that were there. They're like some of my good friends on the island I've known for almost five years. And I was really paying attention to the conversations that I was having with them. Like, w were we talking about things that were uplifting? Were we talking about positive, like, like basically, were we in the vibration that we trust the universe and that everything's working out? And like the first person I talked to, like she's just like telling me how much she is bad at social media and like no one likes her and no one follows her. And I was like, oh, well, you know, like you're, you're, <laughs> I was like combating this, you know, I was just like, okay. Um, but it's all working out perfectly. Like you're, you're reaching to who exactly who you're meant to reach, you know? And if you come at it, I was ex sharing with her, if you come at it from a positive vibration, that is what is going to attract the people in that are meant to hear you. It doesn't, it's not about the numbers. It's about the vibration and like who is actually meant to hear you right now. And she was like, oh yeah, that's, that's a really good point. And then we ended up having like a really beautiful conversation based on that. And the second friend I talked to, he, uh, you know, just bought land here and like his neighbors, who was one of his friends, like ended up destroying all of the nature right next to him. And like, and he was just like, yeah, this island, it's getting so built up and nature and land. And I said, yeah, but you know, I really trust that the universe like is going to work it out. And I also have a very strong connection to the spirit of this island, like Mama Copanyang. And I told him, I was like, I really believe that it always is going to work out for the best. Like, I, I, ha I choose to believe, I have to believe this, and that the island will protect itself, and that, you know, and of course, we can do our part to um, guide the island in this positive direction. And he was like, yeah, actually, I believe that too. Like, he was like, that's what I love about the island is like, here, like, people they intellectually do understand that we can trust the universe and that it's all beautiful and positive. But sometimes I think our, we're just so used to as a society to connect through complaining and that it's like, what if you connect through celebrating beautiful things in your life and things that you're grateful for? So after that, him and I had a beautiful conversation about uh, his mom who passed away recently that I knew here on the island and she was such a beautiful woman and she like died in her, I think her 80s and he like brought her here to the island and we all, all of us here had a special connection to her. She's such an amazing person and, and I like started crying because I was like, wow, thank you for sharing the story. I, had, I didn't know that she had passed away. I knew that she was sick and he was like, yeah, I was just so grateful that I was able to be here with her and that I was able to connect her with all of you and that, you know, like, and just have this really special connection to my mom and I'm like, this is this is what I'm here for, you know? Like, this is the kind of connection that I love. It's like someone talking about how grateful they are that they're close to their mom, that they were able to be there with their mom through the last months and years of her life and sh and share our beautiful island with her and share her with us. Like, I was so grateful that I got to meet her. She's like this really cool, spunky lady who has traveled all over the world. And, you know, for her time, she was really... Uh, like, I feel like she was like me if I was born, you know, back in the time, like back in the day. Uh, like she really just d lived her life exactly how she wanted to live her life. It didn't matter what society was telling her. So anyways, I'm trying to tell you that like I actively am doing this in my life or I am like really consciously looking at the conversations and also shifting because this is what we are as, if you resonate with the term being a light worker, what that means is like, your soul came here to activate you, to shine your light in the world so that other people, it doesn't matter how they actually respond, it's just that you're this anchor point for them to have the opportunity to raise their vibration to your vibration. So you're like, that's what a light worker is. It's like people need to go do their own work, but you can be this example this embodiment of someone who is living a positive life who does trust the universe who understands that we're all in this together and it's so important for us to care about each other like that is what matters especially in the coming years <laughs> like you're gonna remember this when i say this especially in the coming years it is going to matter that we have built these tribes with each other that we have built these connection points that we have built our soul families so if you don't have 
people in your life that you consider chosen family or if you don't have your blood family, right now is the time to start building this. And it starts with you, one, understanding yourself, understanding your boundaries so that when you go out, you understand like this is the game we're going to play, you know, inter... I want to say interdimensionally, but what I mean is like interpersonally, yes, like between you and another person. <laughs> interdimensionally. <laughs> Anyways, um, I mean, it could be interdimensional. You never know. Uh, I don't know why, but today I'm like making myself laugh so much. Anyways, um, so yeah, understanding your own boundaries and then going out and caring about people, showing up heart opened, like being the kind of person that is loyal, that honors their agreements, that shows up because it's who they are, not because of what you're trying to get out of the other person. To be a grown up and to be someone who is worthy of connection, you have to be the kind of person that is trustworthy. You have to be the kind of person that actually cares from a genuine place, not from a place of scarcity, from a place of abundance. So, yeah, that's a lot. I also, I wanted to talk about like some comments that I was realizing after I made my last podcast. I'm just going to say them so that I, they're in the ether is that it's not about like open the monogamy versus openness. It's not that I, I fully support everyone doing whatever they are meant to do and like whatever aligns with you in the form of your relationship status is great. Uh, I have friends on the island and around the world that are monogamous for like 12 years more. I have friends that are in healthy polyamorous, like healthy in the sense that it works for them and they're super happy about it. Polyamorous situations with kids and like they all like raise their kids together. I have friends who are couples that, um, you know, they play together with other people. And I have friends who are just like, I am just this beautiful unicorn and I'm like a single person that just wants to flow with everyone. You know, like there's like, they're I think that, uh, I can't remember the term, but it's kind of like you're dating yourself and like you are your own primary. This is kind of what I was saying earlier, but they do this actively in like relationship um, dynamics where they are, they don't want to date anyone and they're just like having connections, but like at the end of the day, they come home to themselves. So for me, I've explored all of it. And the reason why I made that last podcast is that I find it super ironic that now I'm in the stage of life where I have explored all of it and it's so beautiful. And the next relationship that I am going to be in, I choose for it to be someone that I build my life with, like the life of, and what I mean by build my life with, I already have my life, I love my life, but build a life where we are actively making, we're like choosing to invest in each other, choosing to invest in, you know, like an eco village, like a bigger, like a bigger, a bigger home environment. And through that bigger home environment and that secure home environment, the idea that kids will come into that at some point. So in the past, when I was talking about like why I thought monogamy didn't work is because I, I really do believe that, you know, there isn't just one person for everyone. I believe that we all have these beautiful like soul connections that come through our lives and they teach us different things. And I have really allowed myself to be open to these soul connections over the last 10 years, be open to these soul connections coming in the form of everything, including the sexual connection. And because in the past I really needed to prove to myself that I was a sovereign being, that I was a free individual for myself, not for anyone else. Like I had to prove it because I'd had so much of my life where I didn't feel free. I found it to be an innate right of mine that I would not close off these connections if they came in the form of these soul connections, if they came in the form of an opposite or opposite or same sex, actually anyone where I felt also a romantic connection to. So I was like, yeah, you're my primary partner, but if this person walks into my life, I want to be able to have like a romance with them. I want to be able to have this and that. So I did that to a very full degree and it's beautiful. And I played the game of that. And what I realize now is that I've never played the game of being fully invested in one person where I actually really loved them and I wanted to like have kids with them. 
um, because I, I was in love with one or two of my past partners, like really all in. And, but I wasn't this clear on like, this is what I need. And what I realize now is that because of who I am in my life and because of who I will attract in my life as a partner, there's going to be many other connections available around us. Like there's going to be abundance of men, women, aliens who want to have sex with us or have romantic connections with us. And what I actually choose now is that I choose from a place of empowerment to have me and like and I choose from my partner like it needs to align that they also want this that we we have all of these people that we could have these romantic connections with and instead we're going to pour all of this energy into each other from a romantic sense and still have these connections with other people but from a platonic sense and wow that sounds so exciting to me now like especially <laughs> because of the fact that I've just never done it. Like, you know, maybe I'll play that out and I'll be like, oh no, that's not for me either. But like, this is what I want right now. This is what I choose right now. Like that you have the abundance of all of the things and yet the person in front of you matters more to you than temporary connections with other people. And that you can actually go deeper with this one person because you're choosing to invest your time, energy, love in them. Like, wow. But for me, it needed to come from a place of empowerment, not because my religion told me that monogamy is okay, or is what you have to do, is the only option, actually. And not because society encourages monogamy. Like, I had to do it from a place of, I have tried all the things, and actually, oh, I haven't tried this one yet. I've been in monogamous relationships before, but not from the place of, I know what I want, and I want to build something with you, and I love you so I love you so much that all these other people don't matter anymore romantically. Like, of course, I'm going to have my soul family. I'm going to have, I'm still going to have these soul connections with these ones. I just don't need for it to be romantic because for me, all of this is going into you. And when you, I mean, let me know what you think about this, all of you who have done this. But what I'm intuiting now is that when you, when you do that, when you pour your heart and your love into one person and you choose to build this bond with them, it goes so much deeper and is so much more nourishing and rewarding than these, sur I don't want to say surface level, but like more surface level connections with other people. Um, and for me, especially being mostly Scorpio on my chart, I'm like, give it to me deep. <laughs> Like, give it to me deep and good. Let's do this. Like, I don't need no more surface connections. Um, and what I found, like, recently is I have a lot of men that are circling my orbit. And they're all so, such beautiful men. And I love them so much. But I know that my vibration right now is ready for what I just said to you. This, like, very deep partnership with someone that I am so excited to call my partner and they're so excited to call me their partner and like we're so excited to build a life together and have babies one day and you know we each have our empires that we're combining and we're making more and more abundance um that if i for me like when i'm talking about all these men that are like orbiting my field right now it w feels to me that it really like what you what you choose is what is what the universe is going to give you. So a lot of times when like something is about to come to you that is exactly what you want, the universe will give you something that is almost what you want, but not quite. And a lot of people, because they come from scarcity mindset, they will just take that thing and say, okay, this is what I meant to have. I'm not those people. So for me, every time a new man comes into my orbit, it's like he's a little bit closer. He's a little bit closer. He's a little bit like vibrationally and in the way that I imagine the person who is my partner. I can like feel him energetically. And like vibrationally, these people are getting closer and closer. And because I am so 
trusting of the universe, I just really honor that these other men who are coming into my life are meant to be like close friends of mine, but I'm not meant to have a romantic connection with them because it's not honoring them and it's not honoring me if they're not the person that I choose right now that I already like I can feel my whole my whole vibration my whole aura is like mm, I'm ready to receive this thank you and if I receive something that is not that then I'm telling the universe that's what I wanted and it's not and if I do that then I'm not honoring them as well because they're going to be able to feel that they're not good enough that's what it will translate to and it's not that they're not good enough it's that we're just not aligned in what what I need and who they are and probably it's going the other way because like this is the conversation that I had with Josh was that like yeah I match his list but the fact that I he doesn't match my list all the way makes me like not qualified to be a partner for him and that's super valid that is like so important to honor that because otherwise it's just not going to work anyways anyways this is what I wanted to update you because a lot of you were asking, like, what, the, what is she talking about? I thought she was all about open relations. I'm all for open relationships. I'm hosting a play party this weekend. Let's go. Like, I really feel that play parties are about deprogramming yourself from societal programming. Those words make sense. But, um, like, really allowing all of this stuff to fall away and then asking yourself, like, who am I and what do I want out of romance, out of sexuality, out of you know, my own boundaries with myself. It's such a beautiful playground to figure all this stuff out in a safe environment. And I'm here for all of it, you know? And also at the same time, I know exactly what I want in a partner. And those two things are all aligned. So everything's great. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to go now because I have to go make some big moves in the universe and follow universal intuition of what I need to do next in my day. And... Uh, which is also going to involve going to the gym and going to the ice bath and the sauna and taking Afro to the beach for sunset. Life is amazing, and I'm so grateful for it, and I'm sharing this vibration with you that you also can choose that your life is amazing and upgrade your life. <laughs> okay, have a beautiful day, and I will see you in the next episode.